If you're watching this video, you must be some type of programmer, or you may be interested in programming. You may see languages like C, Java, Python, and hundreds of others, and you may have wondered at some point of time, how do you create a programming language? We're going to answer that question here, and also build our own system that analyzes the declaration section of a C program. A computer language is like any other spoken language. It has its own tokens and grammar. Tokens are a set of symbols with their own meaning and are the building blocks for a language. Tokens can be lowercase alphabets, uppercase alphabets, punctuation, or even special symbols. We can also create a multi-character token called a word and demonstrate it as a sequence of alphabets. In English, a more reasonable example would be to create tokens of different parts of speech. For example, boxes can be a noun token, beautiful can be an adjective token, or very can be an adverb token, and so on. Every language has its own grammar as well. This involves the arrangement of tokens to form something of meaning. If tokens can be described as a set of symbols, then it is the grammar that generates phrases and sentences. We can define a phrase as a sequence of one or more word tokens with the correct part of speech. An example of a phrase would be beautiful SARS, which is an adjective followed by a noun. Another example would be a magnificent luminous sky, which is an adjective followed by an adjective followed by a noun or very big shadow, which is an adverb followed by an adjective followed by a noun, and like so. These phrases in turn can be combined to form sentences. All we need to do is understand the syntax of various sentences. An example of a sentence in English would be, I saw a blue horse. So this would be a noun followed by a verb followed by a phrase. Or you can divide every sentence into subject followed by a predicate where every subject would be of the form of a noun and the predicate would be the rest of the sentence. So do you see what we did here? By defining tokens, both single character and multi-character, and defining how these tokens should appear, we have effectively defined the structure of the English language. Oh my gosh, AJ, you're like so smart, so smart, so smart, so smart. Now, we defined how English works. Great. You can create any language you want just by knowing the tokens and the grammar. For programming, we could have keyword tokens, arithmetic tokens, identifier tokens, number tokens, and so on. Now, the big question that's on everybody's mind, how do you implement this? You can generate tokens in a language tool called Lex, which is short for Lexical Analyzer. In this .l file, or the .fl file for Flex, you generate your own tokens. Lex files are actually converted to C behind the scenes. But writing Lex files is much easier compared to writing C files. Around 50 lines of Lex is converted into over 2,000 lines of C. Now, once the tokens are defined, how do we define the grammar for a new language? This is done using YAC or Bison. YAC stands for Yet Another Compiler Compiler. You take the tokens generated by Lex and pass it to a parser. This parser is written in YAC. YAC takes a concise description of the grammar and produces a C routine that can parse that grammar. This YAC parser automatically detects whether a sequence of tokens matches one of the rules in the grammar and takes some action as defined. It also detects a syntax error whenever its input does not match any of the given rules. So if I were to take an example, the condition to check if x is equal to 4 would be something like this. Well, I just hope you get the idea here. Even if you don't, I'll be explaining the process with a cool implementation. I've said through this video that we're going to create a new language. What exactly does that mean? What I actually mean is that we are going to create some program that understands a custom set of tokens and grammar or syntax rules. Those familiar with programming will know that this is one of the tasks of a compiler. Here's a flow diagram for different phases of compiler design. 
Of these seven phases, we are only concerned with the first three, performing lexical analysis, syntax analysis, and semantic analysis. Lexfile will take care of the lexical analysis, while the YAC file will take care of both syntax and semantic analysis. Now, how exactly does this happen? I'll explain these three phases, but keep this flowchart in mind. We're going to come back to it later while we're putting everything together. The source file, which is the C code in this case, is passed into our scanner, or lexical analyzer, or lexer. This lexer will tokenize this input to generate a stream of tokens. These tokens are represented as the alphabets of our language that are to be recognized and processed. Since we'll be literally reconstructing the C language, we want to generate tokens that are the same as that of, well, C. Hence, the stream of tokens here is pretty close to what we expect. We define these tokens in our lex file. Note that the lex file itself is not the scanner. It is the scanner generator, if you will. It will create a C program called lex.yy.c, and this file is the scanner. lex.yy.c is the file that does the tokenizing process that we just discussed. The stream of tokens produced is now fed into the YAC parser. A grammar for the sequence of tokens is specified by the parser. A set of rules in your YAC file will look something like this. Now, a parse tree is generated and a program is checked to see if it follows this context-free grammar. The statement int a is equal to 10 is a valid declaration statement since its parse tree follows the grammar. Note once more that it is not the yak file itself that does this processing, but yak will generate a C file called y.tab.c which will act as the parser. Semantic analysis involves checking if the parse tree constructed follows the rules of the language. For example, assignment values is between compatible data types and adding a string to an integer and all that stuff. We'll take care of these in the yak file as well as some user-defined functions. To summarize what we've done, the source file is passed through the scanner, which tokenizes the input. These tokens are passed into a parser, which generates the parse tree. The input is checked to see if there are no grammar errors by verifying this with the parse tree. We then perform semantic analysis using the parse tree to ensure compatible data types. The rest of it are the other phases of the compiler that we have no interest in. The scanner is lex.yy.c and the parser is y.tab.c. lex.yy.c is created from the lex file using lex, the language tool, while y.tab.c is created from yak file using the yak tool. The yak tool also generates a header file y.tab.h, which is used by lex to generate lex.yy.c. So we need to first generate the parser and then the scanner. The two C files work together to form a language processor which converts the given source code into compiled or interpreted code. Now that you know how Lex and Yak work, we're going to install and work with them in the next video. Oh, and before I go today, just hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and um, hit whatever else you can hit. Uh, yeah. Bye.